For grounding and bonding purposes, machine screw type fasteners must meet which of the following requirements? The correct answer is a gauge at least two threads or be secured with a nut. And for this one, we're going to head to 250.8. This language is paraphrased here in this photo, so please consult the NEC for the actual language. But what we're talking about today is when we're making connections to equipment grounding conductors, grounding electroconductors, and bonding jumpers, how are we allowed to make that connection? And there are several different points listed here that we can choose from. And we're allowed to use one or more of them. Today, we are highlighting part five, which is machine type screws. They have to engage at least two threads if we're threading them into something or be secured with a nut. And I'll say, and if you wanted to be secured with a nut. And I'm gonna give you an example of a time that I do both methods. When I'm bonding pools, if I'm bonding some metal, even if that metal's thick, I will use, or thin, either one, I will use a tapping tool and tap those 1032 threads. I'll thread that screw in there, and then I'll still put a nut on the backside because of the serious nature of the necessity for uh, equipotential bonding. That's a time that I'll use one or more. But if you wanted to come to a metal enclosure and you're wanting to add a lug onto it, you can take your tapping tool, you can tap it, form those threads, tapping and, and threading. You're going to tap it, you're going to thread it, and then you can thread into that. And as long as you get two threads engaged, you're good to go. If you don't feel like you got those two threads, what you would do is just put a nut on the back side. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and my bargain is that these videos will continue to add value to you, and you will in turn go out and add value to others. If you need anything from me, you can always email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.